that uh it was probably i don't know two three years ago i was kind of way well, wasn't kind of to it i was a victim of a i almost i almost got robbed had to do what i had to do mm. so for the longest time i was sitting kind of like i mean i was trying to you know digest the you know and process everything that had happened mm -hmm. kind of sitting there like why am i why did i get to stay here you know right so whenever it was let's see maybe two about a year two years ago something like it me and carl we was at my house watching wrestlemania mm -hmm. talking about it again so it we, we kind of want them friends to like you do it i'll do it <laughs> stars one half of black ice welcome to the show james frost how we feeling my man uh, maintain it man you can't call it just happy to be here you know we're happy to have you i appreciate you reaching out and we got you on the show uh how's things in the wrestling business lately you feeling good yeah i mean i had a little leg injury to the uh beckley show but i've been nursing that back so it's it's definitely been better than it was Okay. Okay. Well, let's dive into that. What happened? Uh, it was me, Carl, uh, Jack Sharp in the ring. Well, I was in the ring with Jack Sharp. Mm -hmm. Went waist slot, spun around, got up on my left leg. Fine. Got up on that perfect right leg. Dropped me to my ass, man. Dropped me to my ass. Mm. So I really thought I tore it then. So I don't know. I just kind of just had to just muscle through it. You know, you know how wrestling is. So, not not to the extent you know but i i know i see what you guys go through god bless you man when we think we're gonna be back uh who knows could be two months could be six months could be saturday my hometown mcdowell county uh -oh. PW. could be then never know okay i dig it leave a little bit of mystery i i dig it well oh. We hope to see you back in there sooner than later. I promise it's, you that. I miss it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. What are you doing to cope, man? What are you doing? You know, it's got to be driving you crazy not getting in there. So how do you mend your mind when it comes to something like that? Trying to stay up to date on all the wrestling. Trying to stay up to date on all the wrestling, you know, AEW, WWE, NXT, you know, stuff like that. Still try to go to practice and stuff just to at least be around the rest in the ring here to bumps, try to help, you know, people I'm in there training with, you know, stuff like it. That at least try to help me wing through it as hard as it is. Right so. on. I feel it. What are you seeing on uh, the TV that you're liking nowadays? I'm a huge Will Ospreay fan. No huge, doubt. Same. Yeah, I'm a huge Carmelo Hayes fan. Oh. Uh, been following Mello since uh, Limitless. I knew he'd be somebody, and he's blowing up. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what this rock thing will come about. No doubt, no doubt. That's got a few more eyes back on wrestling, so I'm, I'm all about that. What about uh, the news broke today when we're recording this? Jay Cargill is official with WWE. Hey. Uh, hey, yeah, she done went to WWE. I'm excited for that. There's so many matchups I'm ready for. Yeah, like, all it doesn't make WrestleMania. I I'll probably ride honestly. 
<laughs> I hear you. Yeah. You you rolling up to Philly with us for WrestleMania? We all just gonna sneak in the back door and get in that bitch? I'm with it. Yeah, I'll, man. I'll ride in the trunk if you need me to. No doubt, no doubt. The tickets are too damn much, so we're just oh. gonna have to sneak in that bitch. Oh, I know. Someone can come up with some staff shirts or something. <laughs> hey, I know I know a girl that can make them. Hey, we can set it up then. I'll throw it <laughs> as money. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, since we're talking mania, let's throw out hypotheticals. It's kind of in our neck of the woods. It's not too far away. And during mania weekend, all these indie companies, they're piggybacking. They're running their own shows. In a perfect world, we get to Philly, and you can uh, you can work any match against any independent talent on one of these independent shows. Who would you work? Any independent talent. Currently, right now. Currently, right now. Mm. Now we talking about let's say we gonna say like RSW stuff like it. That's what we talking. They'll be there. Os- Osprey, you can't work him because he's fighting Kota Ibushi at a New Japan show. Uh. <laughs> hmm. See, Indy, Indy, Indy. Eddie Kingston. Okay. Eddie Kingston. I like it. All in style, you know. Hell yeah. Because I, I used to box that in Welsh, where I'm, well, Miguel Caddy. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Tell me that more is. about that. Huh? Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, I actually got into boxing because I couldn't get to wrestling. I was going to train up in uh, Bakley about 2013, 2014. Okay. Uh, Anthony Perdue and didn't get to make it because from Beckley to Welch is about an hour and a half driving. It's kind of harder when you don't have a car at the time. Yeah, I feel it. So the boxing gym had just opened up probably three miles away from where I lived at. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I can get into boxing until I get into wrestling. Mm-hmm. So never got back to wrestling then. Mm-hmm. Then. So I ended up boxing probably three four years and then my son he was about to be born so i had to move from welch up to bluefield mm-hmm. and i wouldn't box because i'm not at home right Boxing's kind of, i think it's kind of the same way with uh wrestling you need that i'll say that one-on-one not only just ring time and stuff but you need that one-on-one with like a trainer that kind of like he can show you strengths and weaknesses and okay. that's really the coaches at PWL shine it. Okay. Now, you give me an interesting opportunity here. We haven't had anybody in the boxing field. Uh, compare and contrast for me. Tell me some similarities between boxing and pro wrestling and tell me some differences. Hmm. Boxing, I mean, similarities, I'll start there first. Okay. Sim- boxing and wrestling is legal assault, straight up. Right. You versus them is that I can whoop your ass and go right home scot free. That's okay. what it is. is. And I mean, let's see, going out in front of a crowd and stuff like that, you, like I said, just like in boxing, 1v1. Mm-hmm. Wrestling, time is 1v1, but you know, you got your tag teams, obviously, your three man, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like it got me more ready for wrestling because I was used to being in front of a crowd and you know that's but the differences I'll say it's the locker room okay um, because in boxing you're like I said it's more just you you know right so mess some shit up you got to make sure you you know you don't have a team behind you or a locker room behind you or a training class behind you like that like wrestling does right it's more you're more hungry for yourself in boxing than you are in in wrestling see what i'm saying so i'm from, <clears throat> i'm familiar with a wrestling locker room especially i'm real proud of what west virginia is doing everybody gets along it's always a good time people laughing having fun oh, nine yeah. times out of ten what's what's a boxing locker room like quiet yeah. Quite everybody's zoned in or trying to get zoned in. The only thing you really hear is just the mat from the leather. Okay. And, uh, like I said, I was 
boxing probably three, four years. I stopped because my son was about to be born, so I had to move from Welch up to Mercy County. Mm-hmm. So I told everybody, told myself I wouldn't box anymore because I'm not home. Mm-hmm. Well, just so happened, the PWL was throwing shows and stuff in training class. Literally, I can go on my front porch and see the skating ring. That's okay. how close. So when I said, okay, I said I wouldn't box when I'm at home, but something that I wanted to do is across the street. So if anybody bullshitting, it's going to be me. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, I mean, I can shoot on here, right? Oh, yeah, please do. All right, cool. Because this, I'm, I'm making sure I'm as clear and as transparent as ice could be, no pun intended. <laughs> but uh, it was probably, I don't know, two, three years ago. I was kind of, well, it wasn't a kind of to it. I was a victim of a, I almost, I almost got robbed. Had to do what I had to do. Mm. So, for the longest time, I was sitting kind of like, I mean, I was trying to, you know, digest the, you know, and process everything that had happened. Mm-hmm. Kind of sitting there like, why am I, why did I get to stay here? You know? Right. So, whenever it was, let's see, maybe two, about a year, two years ago, something like that, me and Carl, we was at my house watching WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. talking about it again so it, we, we kind of want them friends to like you do it I'll do it <laughs> so he ended up talking to Aaron West I went over and it <laughs> which bring me up later about him mm-hmm. uh, the first person I had spoke to about who can I talk to about trying to find somebody for me to you know talk to about training was Eric mm-hmm. back to him later but <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I went in there. First person I really got to spoke to was Jeff Paul. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get back to it. But yeah, I had to go through all that and then really had to process what am I doing here and stuff. So to you know, got to go over there, talk, end up doing my first couple you know classes of training, and then my love for it just started growing and growing and growing. And then I started working shows, and then. The success we didn't got and stuff, it can kind of show me why I got kept here, you know? Right. Like, just the love and stuff we get from the fans and the rush you get from coming out the curtain and the, the, just everything. Just And you really won't, you can't know it until you're in it, you know? Yeah. One of those things, like, you really can't explain until you've, like, been in a locker room, you done made a town, you done throw that gear on, you done, you know? Hell yeah. Well, hell yeah, man. I appreciate you sharing that because, like you said, there's a reason you're still here. Uh, I see it on social media, man. Folks love you. Uh, And and not just you. You know, PWL has something special going on. Uh, To the audience that isn't aware of PWL, sell them PWL. Let them know what's going on with the training, with the shows. Let them know what's going on. PWL, we got the best training class around. We got the best trainers around. We have by far one of the most best shows in West Virginia. If you don't believe me, check the stats. Yep. Check the tap. Come enjoy it for yourself. I promise you, you will not be sorry. I promise that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree, hundred and ten percent, man. Like uh, one of the most magic. I mean, every every show is always great, but one of the most magic moments that I've been a part of, that I was fortunate enough to film. Benny Benny Conley against Cyclops, that eruption from the crowd, just goosebumps, man. Even before they locked up, I had goosebumps. Oh, and, yeah. Man. I was like, yeah. like, I'm still green now, but I was, like, green enough. Like, I wasn't doing shit but, like, security. Okay. I was over there in the, you know, in the corner, you know, watching and stuff. But, like, you could just feel the energy before they even locked up. You know, kind of like them old takeover moments and stuff before yep. the bell ring and like they just look around and you can just feel it like you know this is about to be a banger you know uh-huh yep uh, so i'm super blessed i got to have benny conley as one of my trainers like i love him to death for, for hurry up and get back benny we missed you benny such a good dude such a good dude and i'm so glad you mentioned you were green you were working security on yesterday's episode i brought this up and i'm gonna bring it up to you and get your opinion here I'm t- uh, a friend of mine's talking about getting into wrestling. He's going to start training. 
I said, well, yo, you going to this Friday show? I don't know, man. Tim wants me to come help set up, and I just ain't feeling that. Talk, talk to me about paying dues in wrestling. I mean, it sucks. It's going to suck. You're going to be good ass to do the most stupidest shit ever. But- for example... For, uh, by, the, by the way you said that, it sounds like you've been asked to do some stupid shit. Oh, oh absolutely, but it's part of paying your dues. Right. Like, you'll get a worker merch table. You'll get, you know, help. The, some of them rings ain't as bad as others, but most of them are heavy as hell. Sometimes you're not going to have a whole lot of help. Some uh, You're going to be up 11, 12 o'clock helping with the ring, you know? Yeah, it sucks, but it's part of it because whenever you start making towns and stuff like that, you're going to look back at them moments. Whenever you just sitting around carrying parts of the ring and shit, bullshitting, talking, you know, mm-hmm. just laughing and carrying on and stuff. That's moments you'll, you'll miss, which I mean, I'm still kind of, you know, I'm green, but I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm starting to get more booking, you know, stuff like it. Hell yeah, good, good. I'm about so- it. It's um, I mean, not only do you have to do it, but I'll say it helps kind of build character, you know. For sure. Yeah, so, I mean, it helps you enjoy the business a little bit more whenever you do get to make them bookings and stuff like that. See what I'm saying? Yep. And it's helping to better the product. There's not going to be a ring unless those new guys are setting up the ring. There's not going to be an entranceway unless those, you know, uh, exactly. some of those fans, y'all get a PWL, you need security. Tell me about the uh, fans of PWL. Oh yeah, we got we got the best fans, but they are rowdy. <laughs> uh, but we wouldn't have it any other way. That's what make good wrestling good wrestling. The the product is not anything without clientele. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So without them fans, we just a bunch of sweaty dudes slapping meat in a ring. <laughs> is there any times you work security where things got a little hairy and you had to step in? Ah. Uh, it is. It is. It was one. I think that was the last time I worked security because I was that hot. I sit out the whole rest of the time. Really? Well, we was, need the details here, please. I was working security. Jeff Paul being Jeff Paul. <laughs> in the heat, as he should, you know, as he. So it was one of our, you know, our. Uh, I wouldn't say our lovers, but our uh, regulars, our regular fans, you know, our diehards. Uh huh. All right, so he's one of them. He's one of the fans that like he really like to get the, you know, get everybody going, get the, you know. For sure. Yeah. So I'm sitting here, green, green, trying to do my job, right? Uh huh. Right. So I tell him, "Hey, sit down." Now, mind you, we're at the first match of the night. Okay. okay? Early. This was in the show, okay? <laughs> I'm telling hey man, sit down. Yeah, he get on the microphone. How security needs to get that guy. All right, going. Okay, second match he cool. Third match I'll be damned if he ain't up again. <laughs> so I tell him, hey man, you gotta sit down. I'm trying to whisper it to him. So he said, well who gonna make me? I have security on my shirt, combat boots on. But what? Well, who do you think's gonna make me? <laughs> So I'm trying to still get booked here. Like I said, I'm baby shit green right now. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of everything that I can not to cuss, bite, anything. So I do the most logical thing. I'm a go tell. <laughs> so I go tell. Not nothing happened. Not nothing. Not nothing happened. They had to explain to me like. He's, you know, he's cool. He's good, you know. So that was one of the times that, like, it really got, like, out of hand because I told them, dog, I'm not going back out through that curtain because I'm telling you. Wait, this motorcycle go by. I told him, if I go back out through this curtain and he say something else to me, I'm telling you, y'all are going to be pissed at me because I am going to shut this whole show down. <laughs> I'm staying back here, right? Right. <clears throat> so, and it's crazy because that happened and then we had a show at the Bluefield Carnival. We had a little battle royal and stuff. It ended up being me and Carl final two. Okay. So we tore it down. Like we that little I don't know minute and a half we went in there. We I know we did that. We did the damn thing. Uh-huh. After that, the same guy 
they, you know, got into it with the crown stuff. He came over to us. You did so good. And he, uh, he actually told me something that stuck with me. So he like, do you know? Cause he always called me slinky. Okay. Oh, slinky. And I never really understood it. I thought he was just being funny cause I'm tall and skinny and stuff. And you know, uh, so he said, do you know why I call you slinky? I said, no, oh, wow. I was curious at this point. Mm-hmm. So he said, slinky and long. They been, but they don't break. And ever since then, we we've been like it. I love him and his wife to death, for real. They made me a, a cookie cake for my birthday this year. So that when I ain't even gonna lie, I told him because uh, this was the same day we was about to work DD trash in that street fight. Okay. So for the show day, it came up to me. I thought it, it was in a pizza box. So I'm like, damn, what you give me this heavy ass pizza for? Is this a deep dish or something? <laughs> I opened it. It had like a J with the uh, black ice, you know, going down in the stuff. So I had told him I was about to take it home so it wouldn't melt. I went home and cried like a bitch. For sure. Oh, for real. So I, if y'all, I know y'all watching this because you messaged me, uh, told me to shout you out. Lay y'all to death. That meant a lot to me for real. No doubt. No doubt. I pre- Hey, man. Don't, I've said my, I've said it on here before and I'll say it again. Uh, I've probably cried more happy cries in the past year than i have in all my life uh there's something about wrestling man so i'm i'm it's glad like, you're getting a taste of the dream that's what it's all oh, about yeah. Oh, yeah. hell yeah i mean when you was at when i announced you was going to be in on the show the comments oh. that started coming in that reminds me we need to look to facebook and get to some fan questions as a matter of fact because i know Ooh. we got some fan questions for you here you they got let's see what we got now the first one's by uh an individual, you might know him, his name's Jeff James. Oh. A bit of a jerk. Oh, God. Let me bring it up here. Uh, What's it like being a cat? Being a what? A cat. What's it like being a cat? Maybe, see, it's a cat emoji. Now, now that I'm oh, reading it, maybe okay. he's calling you a pussy. All right, see, Jeff, I'm going to have to tell you about yourself come tell third. Him. But, uh. I don't know, man. Just trying to stay away from police, I guess. <laughs> he t- you know, a couple lives I got left, man. Just living a dream. <laughs> there you go. Good response. Good. He thinks he's hot shit because his podcast broke a thousand views today. Uh, and he made sure to let me know about it. I promise. I promise. Tell you, you come on here and be running down people like he was, you get a thousand views too. He is an asshole, but that is, I'm telling you. It definitely helped me through a lot since I've been in this for real. Like, uh, I went through a real bad breakup around the time I let, let's see, I might have had my first, second, first and second battle royal, mm-hmm. but yeah, I was going through a real bad. No, it's the first one, but I was going through it like fresh and real bad, you know, anxiety and stuff from the other shit I had going on because it was like I really didn't have nobody at the time, you know, right. So one day I was at practice and he was like, hey, what you doing Saturday this weekend? Nothing. What's up? Well, I'm going to one show. I'm wrestling uh, Ricky Morton. Then the next day we're going to get Billy Gunn from the airport. This is when Retro had Billy Gunn at the airport. Okay. So I was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. And yeah, ever since then, we didn't got close for real. Because it's like you can understand how much work Jess puts in. And I mean, you really won't know until you get to know him and look past the assholeness. Right. You know? But once you do that, Jeff puts that work in. Like 120%. Jeff makes towns. He gets his name out there. He gets heat wherever he goes. Jeff really is that guy. Like, I promise. You might not like him, but you have to respect the work that he puts in. Oh, for sure, for sure. And I'd say it about him, too. Whenever I'm at those shows and I see those fans booing him and talking shit, they're doing it with a smile on their face. The people know he's a good dude. Uh, he, do- he plays a hell of an asshole, but anytime I'm at a show, I might be standing there by myself thinking, well, what, how can I shoot this? Or how can I, I'm just, I stand there and I think before the show and leave it to Jeff. He's going to come up to me. You okay, man? Everything good? And I'm just standing there thinking. I'm not upset or anything, but he's always making sure I'm good. So, I mean, he could asshole look and like that, you know. Asshole. But whenever you get past that, he's a big teddy bear. Yeah. 
good dude, good dude. Deserves a thousand views, most oh. podcasts. Good on oh. him. He does. I'm waiting on him to get that call for real because he honestly deserves it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even, uh, hey. believe me. He's still an asshole. But like I said, he's my asshole. He's one of them people that, like, since I've been <laughs> in this business, it, it he's one of them I keep kind of, like, close to my heart because he he didn't have to do that, you know? Yep. And I'm just the way that, like, he told me to come with him that weekend and stuff. That was obviously him trying to, like, open up to me and, you know, get, you know, try to get to know me, be cool, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And so, not- you know, I was kind of like, all right, I'm going to do the same thing, you know. I'm going to see. Because everybody, any time you hear Jeff Paul's name or Jeff J, that, which, if, you know, mm-hmm. you hear, you're going to think asshole, straight up. Right. I know it because I'm an asshole myself, so I know it had to be something else behind it, you know? Right. Or you like it. And that's really the way I like Jeff. The way he's training us whenever he comes train us, I can tell that mentality is there, you know? Yeah. Like, you don't feel you until you're undeniable. And that's the exact way Jeff Carrera has been over the past five years. People didn't believe him. Now look at him. Yep. So, I mean, putting that, he's putting that mentality in us. He's putting that dog into us. You yep. know, straight up. Well, I mean, just like my buddy over here saying, he's a, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's barking up about Jeff Paul. Yeah. Not only is he a good dude looking out for fellow good dudes, he knows what he's doing. It's obvious. He's packing houses. Like you say, he gets heat anywhere he's going. He's respected by veterans. He's a good one to have on your side. And I'm Absolutely. glad he's on my side, by God. And I'm glad I'm on his side. It's a couple people that, like I said, it they I keep them – Close. Obviously, my tag team partner, Carl. Mm-hmm. That's one of them. Another one that, like, I love to death, and I can't wait to kill that. That actually called me out since he's been hurt, which I still ain't forgot. But uh, Huff Manley, love you, buddy. Can't wait for you to come back, man. No for doubt. Real. Damn good, dude. But, yeah, uh, like I said, when I was going through that breakup stuff, and like, I was really kind of nervous about my first battle royal and stuff because, like I said, I've been boxing before. Mm-hmm. First time being in a wrestling ring in front of a wrestling crowd. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Got to do a whole lot more in wrestling than you do in boxing. Boxing is just left and right. See what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Wrestling, you have so much to know and remember and do and all that. So everything's going through my mind how I'm about to perform. And mm-hmm. it's the first in front of a crowd in three, four years. Oh, yeah. Huh? Definitely helped me get through that. Helped me get through the, you know, the shakes and, you know, the quivers of being in front of a crowd again and stuff. So, I'm definitely appreciative of that. And then ever since then, like I said, we've been, you know, close. So. Good. Hell yeah. I'm glad. Glad we gave Huff Manley his due because oh. another one of the good ones for sure. Oh, uh. <coughs> we love you, Huff. Can't wait to see you back soon. Take care of yourself, my man. So we got uh, Mickey Boggs writing in. What's the match that made you made you want to be a pro wrestler? Mm. <sighs> Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 27. Was it 27? They wrestled two years in a row. I think it was 25 and 26. 25 then. Not the one when he retired, but the one before that. Okay, got you. Uh, Like the... uh. What color gear did Shawn Michaels have on? He had like a copper color on that one. That okay. one, that was six star to me. That's the one I was like, okay, I want to do this. Hell yeah! How, that, how old was you then? Hmm, maybe fifteen, sixteen. I got into wrestling when I was probably like twelve, thirteen. I can honestly still remember the first episode. I was was uh, it was about August something. I don't know what exact date it was, mm-hmm. but episode when. Edge unveiled the rated R title and Jeff Hardy came back. Okay. So yeah, that right there, that episode right there kind of made Edge my kind of like my goat and Jeff Hardy my goat. That's my top two right there. Hell yeah. I love uh, that. You know, 12, 13, that's kind of like that age you go into where like it's a new growth in your life, you know? Yep. It's kind of like who you about to be in life. What are you about to like? What are you about to not like? Uh-huh. See what it's like when you're really trying to find yourself again. See what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So, when I had seen that, I mean, because at the time, you know, John Cena was the, he was, 
up here in 06, 07. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I seen Edge come out, he's the champ. He got the girl. He just threw the title in the, you know, in the river, bought his out. Mm -hmm. I know that's my guy right there. Hell yeah. Don't Hell care yeah. who it is. It's, I, I'm going to get it my way, and I don't care who likes it. I'm going to make sure I, it's done, you know? I love it. I'll tell you how, this will tell you how old I am. It okay. remind you talking about that reminded me of me watching Shawn Michaels turn on Marty Jannetty and throwing him through the barbershop window. And that's when I was like, okay, I like these bad guys. Shawn Michaels is my dude. So, yeah, that's what? A, I'm an old head. That's what, late 80s, early 90s? Na 1992, I believe. Oh, uh, okay. I forgot. I, I know I was close. I, I knew it was before. That was before him and Diva, right? Yeah, yeah, right before. Right, he was on. A, yeah. He was with Sherry for a while, and then uh, after Sherry, he was with Diesel, and then Diesel was the flavor of the month. We all know how it went from there. Let's see what else we got for you. Okay, uh, Willie Storm wrote in. What are your goals moving forward after recovery, and how do you plan on capitalizing on the momentum that you have built? Oh, What's my plans when I come back, and how do I plan on capitalizing with the success that I built? Yes, sir. See, my plans when I come back, because honestly, I heard that since I've been hurt, that somebody was taking credit for it when I hurt my leg a month and a half before the match happened. <laughs> so, with that being said, if since my leg may or may not, be feeling better that I'm just going to mess it up again because I'm going to break it off two, three different ways in y'all ass. Because if you're going to claim it, you're going to have to stand on it. Okay. If you the one messed my leg up when I, you didn't even touch me, I was touching your boys. I beat your boys with one leg on. With one leg. One. One. I heard it two, three minutes into the match. I beat y'all with one leg. So, that's the first thing I want to do. Second, my success we didn't generate and stuff. I need some gold. I need some gold. We already, I feel like, now quote me if I'm wrong. In my opinion, it's my opinion. I can't change anybody else's opinion. But I don't feel like anybody's rookie career stepping on us. I'm sorry. I don't know any rookie green under a year taking bookings that made it to ASW. Work DD Trash a month straight. I don't know who doing it. And, and DD Trash put y'all over. You know, like they only had good things to say about y'all. So yeah, that's, on the real. Yeah. So after that, I, I just, <laughs> I need some gold. Me and Carl need some gold. We need some. We need to be a little bit heavier. You know, at least I know I do. I'm slinky. You know. Oh, that's right. That's right. Got put some weight on. I got you. I'm about it, man. You said you was going to circle back around to Aaron West. That's a man that I believe uh, needs his due and needs his flowers. What can you tell us about Aaron West? Amazing teacher. Amazing coach. Amazing coach. He knows your weak point. He knows if you're hurt. He knows if something's wrong. He knows everything. He's the type of coach. He zeroes in on your strengths and weaknesses and focuses on it. I can't give Aaron enough of his flowers, honestly. Hell yeah. No, another damn good dude. Uh, oh. He's he's another reason PWL so special, man. You got Benny, you got Jeff, you got Jason Kincaid popping in there, Aaron West. I mean, you guys are in damn good hands. What about <coughs> some other trainees? Who's who's some other ones that you think is going to turn some heads? Let's see. Big, black, Carl, that's one. But I ain't even, that's my tag team part. I guess, obviously. But uh, Lane Cali, that's yeah. definitely man. Uh, AJ Evans, Aaron Jackson, that's another one to look out for. Uh, Matt Sizemore, he really didn't been impressing me. He really has. He should not be that good to be. Because like I said, I'm green too. I ain't trying to you know piss off any vets or anything like that. But to be that green, he's impressive. Right. And uh. Let me see. Another one I'll definitely say that's going to be good is Matt Mendoza or Beavis. Honestly. Beavis, all right. Beavis, all right. Beavis is all right. Uh -huh. If he, I'm he, he's right there. 
Like he's right there. Ah, uh, so yeah. Good on he, Beavis. Good on Beavis. I'm proud of Beavis as well. Good on Beavis. We're all proud of you, Beavis. You mentioned a good point, and I haven't brought this up on the show in a while. Now, you don't have to name no names. I'll throw that out already. But you right. talked about veterans. West Virginia does have a few shithead veterans here and there. Have you ran into any shithead veterans in your time yet? Uh, honestly, around our area, no. No? Okay, but it sounds like you ran into some somewhere else. Uh, there was one, and he a pretty big name, and I ain't going to lie, I got big time. Yeah, I did you? What happened? I, yeah, I, I had asked him because I, I might have had three battle royals in maybe like two matches. So I asked him, hey, can you give me any advice? Because anytime I see somebody that got just a little bit of success or a vet, I want to pick that brain as much as possible. For sure. So I'm thinking, okay, this guy's, you know, African American. He didn't got success different places, Japan, you know, TNA stuff like that. So I'm thinking, if anybody can tell me a little bit of something, it would have been him, right? Uh -huh. I ain't watching none of your matches. I can't I asked him, hey, can you give me any advice about wrestling? And is there any advice you can give me being black in this business? Okay. Know everything. I want to know everything what I'm about to get myself into. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, well, I ain't watched no matches, so I can't tell you nothing about that, and I can't tell you nothing about the other thing. And he turned his head, and really? that was, yeah. So I mean, that kind of like killed my vibe just a tad, like just that much. But it was kind of like, all right, I get you ain't watched my match, bro. You could have called me a little something. You feel me? <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. The more so I'm, I'm go so ahead. I'm, after that, it, I just kind of just let my work show for itself. I dig yeah. it. Give me advice, I'll, you know. But other than that, I really just look for who I'm in the ring with. The, you know, rather it's who I'm training with, who's my coaches. That's who I look to. You feel me? Not yeah. anybody. I look for who's looking at me right now. You know? Right on. I dig it. And back, and back to me saying shithead veterans, nine out of ten times, we've got a lot of good folks. I think, honestly, I've been a little bit spoiled because the locker rooms have been so so good to me and so respectful and everything. So, you know, th there's going to be shitheads in any field. But oh, yeah. uh, most of the time, folks are all right. Folks, good, good folks. Uh, you know yourself, Jeff brings in a lot of names, and uh, any, any of them I've interacted with, they've been great, so... Oh, yeah. And one, one vet that I definitely got to give his flowers to because I feel like ever since I had a match with him, well, it was before the match I had with him, but uh, I feel like since I worked that match with him that, like, I had been on a different level because it's like you'll know it as a work and stuff. You have them couple matches, you know, win, lose, or draw, it made you into a better performer, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, one person I have to give his flowers to is Yellow. Yellow man. Yeah. Uh, that boy, y'all go get that uh Valiant when it dropped too. I ain't seen nobody else do that since uh Offset. He got Jimmy Valiant on the track, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had made a yellow with him, Jeff Ball, uh, uh, Tyler Jacks. Yeah. Be somewhere. I don't even. They had me somewhere. But uh, me and Yellow was talking, and uh, he was telling me to basic formula of a match because you got to think yellow not just around jimmy valiant he's around ricky morton he's around see what i'm saying he's around a lot of people yellow's been in this for a while yep so the whole formula that he told me literally five minutes before that uh carrie morton had went out and wrestled mm. so literally everything yellow had said uh carrie morton was out there doing okay i was like okay I think I'm in good hands now. And then whenever I, me and him had uh, wrestled, we did, you know, same formula. And ever since then, I knew I had been on a, I was on a different level. Then that's the one that, like, got me, like, ready to get more deeper into it and stuff, you know. Like him, Jeff Paul, my match with Jeff Paul, that definitely, mm, that definitely made me into a better worker. Uh, DD Trash, obviously, yeah. which, Hell soon, bro. It's another one hurt. 
Yeah, that one definitely made me into a better one, too. <laughs> Hell yeah, I dig it. Brian Polly writes in, uh, what was your inspiration that helped you decide you wanted to be in wrestling? What was my inspiration for it? I think we kind of touched on that, but is there anything you can add to it? Do you know, you you move to a new area, you like the Shawn Michaels match. Is there anything else we could add to that uh, that pot there? Well, I had always liked wrestling when I was still staying down in Welch. Right. But, uh, you know, I was trying to get, you know, I went, got into boxing and kind of keep me in shape. I really didn't even play fighting. I just kind of just went to work out and do the workout that boxing would do. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it was really the edge and Jeff Hardy because one, that was my inspiration. That's still my inspiration. Like the uh, last show I had worked was that Gang Grill show up in Beckley, the retro. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, uh, that Jeff Hardy and Edge got their start with Gang Grill, right? You know, with Bro, so I mean, just being able to be on the same fly as him, that kind of like showed me like I'm doing something now, you know. No doubt, no uh, doubt. I because I had talked about it like a whole month straight. Like I was hyped. We got booked on it, but just being on the same card with Gang Grill, I was like, yo, we got to take a picture with him. And I was telling Carl that mm-hmm. I didn't even get to take a picture with him because uh, we ended up going being co-main. So by the time we got back through the curtain, it was time for the main event. That was Jeff Paul and Gang Grill. Uh huh. So I'm taking my gear off and stuff, and uh. You know how the brood music start. Mm-hmm. It's undeniable. Bow, 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 bow. So I look back, like, you know, so I see Gangrel with the with the cup, ready to go, gear on and stuff. So I'm like, wow, I had to just sit there and just process it, you know. Uh, I didn't think anybody was really looking at me and stuff until Carl had said something about it. He was like, I had said you just, like, lost in it for a minute. He was like, I gave you a minute just to, you know, just take it in and stuff. So I was like, damn, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jeff Hardy, those are my, that's the reason I'm here, honestly. Yeah, man, you got to take those moments. There's times when I'm out there filming at ringside, and I remind myself, quit looking through the viewfinder and look up, look up at the actual wrestling for a moment. You got to, you got, that's something, you're doing that right. You got to take that in because we're yeah. getting opportunities a lot of folks only dream of, man. Oh, absolutely. And then it's kind of like the camera's enjoying it more than we are. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so I make it a point, you know, at least once a match, look up and actually look at it. So. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I think we got one more. I think we do. Yes, we do. Dustin Burwell. He's from down my way. He's a good fella. What's your pre-match ritual? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm the most religious person, but I do believe in God, obviously, and stuff. But uh. I'll do my stretches. I'll bounce on my toes like I used to whenever I went out the curtain boxing and stuff. But I'll always make sure I get on my knees and pray before okay. I go. But who I'm in the ring with, I'm praying for us. I pray that everybody's safe and gets home good. You know, that's my ritual. Like I'll do it every match. I don't care what it is. I'll always get on my knees. And, you know, just say a quick little prayer just to keep everybody safe and then go out there and do my thing. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's something I, I do nightly. I thank God that I'm in this, that he's keeping us all safe. If it's show day, keep us all safe to the show, during the show, after. And, uh, hey, man, so far so good. It works. The proof's in the pudding, man. We're all shining. The majority of us is healthy. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I, I, I appreciate you saying that. That's good stuff. Uh, what's some other promotions you're looking at that, uh, you know, we're in PWL. Where would we like to re- work uh, in the future at, in a perfect world? In a perfect world. In a perfect world. I need to get the RSW. I need to see what that ring feel like. Yeah, we need to get you down here. Yeah, I need to get down there. Um, my boys and stuff with other people. Ones I love death and stuff. Shout out to them cowboys. <laughs> Yeah, so they was telling me about it and stuff, so I need to get down there. Oh, uh, so I, I de- know some people. I might be able to help you out with that. Oh, uh, ASW, I need to get back. Yeah. Gary's yeah. got a damn good thing going there. I give him his props all day. 
Oh yeah, the locker room, the ring is amazing. Oh, the ring is amazing because I because we go down uh boogies and train, Jimmy Baggins and train. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so the difference between ASW's ring and Boogie's ring is so much different. Yeah. Ooh. But it will get it'll get you right. It'll get you better as a worker inside and out. Honestly, yep. cause no other choice. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Well, let's say we get let's say we get you an RSW. Do you want a singles? Okay, I'll give you two questions. We got you booked on one day in a singles match and another day in a tag match. In a perfect world, who are you working? Well, I ain't been down that way to really know the roster and stuff like that. But I will say I did see it. Ain't, uh, ain't Tyler Jacks coming down that soon? Yeah, just uh, debuted for us last week. Yeah, last week. Oh, last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want, I want Tyler Jacks because I think our styles will go, you know, go well with each other. I really do. I want Tyler Jacks. Hell Stay yeah! Listen to this, Tyler. Yeah, I uh, know. I'm a I'm a huge advocate for Tyler Jacks. Uh, not only did he debut for us, he debuted, won a battle royal, and fought our champion, and almost beat our champion. Oh. Uh. So. Pretty impressive debut. Can be seen on RSW Unauthorized Episode 7. Watch it immediately after this if you don't believe me. Right. <laughs> Let me to see what you're working with now, Ty. Uh-huh. Nah, he's a good kid. We love Tyler Jacks here on the channel. We had him, uh, we had a little celebration stream. It was, uh, it was, it was 4th of July. We had, uh, it was the one year anniversary of Russell Roney. We had Tyler Jacks on here. And he was he was a little bit tore up. I'll just say that he he made a bit of an ass of himself, but that just shows nobody's perfect, I guess. Yeah, he'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, okay, that that takes us down a different road. You've been in the business for a minute. Uh, nobody's perfect. What? Well, nah, we're not going to trash the business. But have you run into any instances where you've seen anything of that sort? By like what you mean by that? Like we'll just we'll just cut that out because we're on such a good vibe. We're talking positive. I don't want to hear if anybody's fucked up in the locker room. I'll just cut all this out. Time stamp forty five. I've I've seen some people fucked up. I've been fucked up filming ring side. <laughs> we'll, we'll turn it into this. Uh, so you're coming back. You 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 got some people you want to take care of. You'd like to dip into RSW. Where do you see yourself? Five years down the road. I mean, I ain't going to say I'm going to get that tall. You know, there they go. But I do want to be that person for McDowell County that they look at that you don't have to just. It's not all about drugs and, you know, just sadness and poverty and stuff. You can follow your dreams no matter what it is. That's what I want to be for that now. Like, I want to damn near Jeff Paul level or higher. Just had to throw that in there because he would just run that to the ground. Uh, I want to be higher than that for my city. I want to be that for McDowell County because no wrestlers, you know, no wrestlers, no boxers, no nothing. We have nothing down there. Well, I mean, I don't stay down there, but I still, that's still my home. I still say we, you know. Right on. To drive literally an hour to even get clothes, shoes, stuff like that. They have nothing down there. They, it's almost like there's no hope down there. See right. what I'm saying? So I want to be that person that, that, hell, I guess, put the city on my back and show y'all that go chase it. Don't give up. You can be, go through it. You can, you can do it, you know? Cause especially like all the stuff that I went through, it's possible. You can still, no matter what negative, messed you up you can still turn that into a positive and that's what I'm, so that i'm just i guess like the thing is i'm just i'm here that's just i'm i'm just here enjoying it you know there you go yep hey man i appreciate that more than you know because i'm in small town west virginia myself i'm in monongah the last person that came out of monongah did something 
was Sam Toothpick Jones. That was about 1950, a baseball player back in the day. And I'll tell you something that you talk about st stuff sticking with you. You made a post yesterday that said you're excited to be on the biggest uh, wrestling media outlet in West Virginia. Mm. And I ain't going front. I screenshotted that shit, and that'll be in my phone. That tells me I'm doing something right. So it's like you said, live your dreams and be that guy. You know, if I can be that guy for Monongah, you can be that guy for McDowell County. Uh, there's a lot of people right now in West Virginia that's uh, okay. doing a lot of good things, man. Oh, yeah. And I absolutely felt like it because, like I said, for the longest time, I was kind of sitting. I was pondering, like, why why did God keep me here, you know, after going through all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, to sit here on the podcast and the success me and Colton got so far and that we're going to get continue to get. It shows me I, he kept me here to wrestle. He kept me here to be here talking to you and to be in front of these fans and to do all this. He kept me here for that. Oh, I mean, thank you for letting me on here and be able to tell my story, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm happy I can be that guy. Believe me, there's uh, – in a perfect world, I'd be in the ring doing it myself, but my body says my body don't want to do a front flip. My body don't want to run the ropes. I'm going to trip over my feet. So uh, there was years I sat here and I thought I was put on this earth to bring my kids to this earth, and they're going to do something great, which they will. But here we are, man. Uh, we're on a pretty damn popular independent wrestling YouTube channel. Uh, you're working for a pretty damn popular wrestling promotion. A lot of eyes on it. So I think we're doing all right, man, and we're both just starting. Uh, even though I've got a few years on you, <laughs> I'm a bit of a late bloomer, I guess. But uh, there's still many things to be done, and I think we're doing it right. We know good folks, meeting more good folks by the day. Yep. And uh, we're putting West Virginia on the map, man. For years, it, there's been good stuff happening. Just you weren't aware of it. Now we're, we're getting that word out, man. Uh, tell me about the importance of the internet and social media to pro wrestling. I feel like it's very important when you're uh, when you're real green. I mean, just like I am. So, but I really feel like that's the way that you're really about to try to get yourself out because you need to get those flyers out. If there's not a hard copy of the flyer, you need to get those out. You need to get the word out that your name is on there. And if you know, there's no hard copy of a flyer and there's your pitch is obviously not on the fly because you're green you need to use that social media to get that not only the brand out but your name out mm -hmm. because independent contractor at that point you see what i'm saying you're young so you need to make sure you can do whatever you can to branch your your business out yep. and only a handful of ways you can do that while you're this green or green earth see what i'm saying yep so that's the way social media come in it helps everybody at that point. I mean, it can motherfucker. It can backfire too. Trust me, but you can definitely use it to get your promotion out and get your name out. For sure. Yeah. And to kind of piggyback off that, that's a great point. To piggyback off of that, send those messages. Shoot, shoot a message to that big timer that you never think is going to reply. Believe me, I've shot in shots, and I've missed. I've gotten no replies. I've gotten false promises. But every once in a while, for whatever reason, they come on the show, and I get an hour seminar for free. And I get that name, and I get to talk to them. And believe me, after I wrap the show, can I keep you for an extra half hour? And I pick the brain, and I get all the knowledge I can. So if you're listening to this, shoot that message to that person you never think will reply. Every once in a while, they will. I promise you. I, I don't even know who I can mention, honestly. Like, I really get the, I would say, like, the camps that I'm in and stuff. I, that's a boxing term. But the <coughs> the training classes that I'm in and stuff, I kind of got a lot of just different shit to, you know. Because, I mean, if I, whatever I don't get up at PWL, Boogies is right there. And, like I said, that's a whole different environment. There's no right. service. Air, ring hard as hell. It's straight grit. It's straight work. You have no other choice but to get better. Yeah. You know? oh, I mean, I feel like PWL, you have like more of the basic stuff that you need to learn, you know, 
but Boogie's is more, to me at least, like I said, my opinion, you know, love both of them, whatever. But I feel like Boogie's is more. Entertainers. Okay. Like you, it helps you more with your facial, your selling, your. That's what I mean by it. It's the boogie woogie man, Jimmy Valiant. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. And that's another thing made me feel like I'm really doing something with this because, uh, like I said, we go up there and train and stuff. So I, we wasn't supposed to go train. Honestly, we was never supposed to be there. We went to go get gear made one day. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we went, we talked to, obviously, Jimmy Valiant, Mama Angel, my uh, boy, which I still, I don't know why I ain't shot out yet. Uh, Hunter, Ref Hunter, love you to death. He had, him and Yella had been telling us to come down there and, you know, come get some work in. So I had been telling him, like, let me get my feet wet a little bit more before I come down there because I know how intense it is down there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we order our gear and stuff, and I get to talking to Jimmy Bag. Well, we get to talking to Jimmy Bag and stuff. So, small talk, I'm thinking, right? So, I told him I stayed close to the uh, skate ring where PWL do their shows at. So, whenever they got him to come down here about a month, let's see, about two months ago. Okay. Remembered, I stayed over there. Now, mind you, this is an 80-something-year-old man. Right. So, just the fact that, and like, he kind of caught me off guard because he had said that, like, we was in uh, mid-conversation. I said, whoa, you remember that? So, the fact that a Hall of Famer remembered me enough to remember where I stayed at, that's why I was like, okay, I'm, I think I'm out to a good start here. I'm around the right people. Yeah, for sure. You hit the nail on the head there because, uh, yeah, it's because. Not to down you in any way, but everything I hear about Jimmy Valiant, that's a genuine soul right there, oh, man. Love Jimmy Valiant to death. That's, oh, love him to death. Hell yeah, yeah. Uh, believe me, people can give him props on WrestleRoney all they want. Uh, dude deserves his due and then some. We're in the final five minutes. Anything, uh, in the final five minutes, I give everybody the opportunity Sell your merch, put your socials out there, and anything, any words of wisdom, advice, inspiration, anything you want to put out there, now's the time, my man. The platform is yours. Follow it, James Frost. Watch out for black ice, but just don't get caught slipping. Uh, follow that PWL page. Support indie wrestling. Support West Virginia indie wrestling. Cause we're taking over. We ain't nothing without y'all, so we need y'all support. Yep. Uh, and never give up on y'all dreams, y'all. No matter what change y'all got on y'all, what y'all think y'all got on y'all, follow that. If you think do it, if God put that on your heart and continue to put that on your heart, like it ate at you, like you just constantly, I want to do that. I want to do that. It's on my heart to do that. Don't do it. Because you don't want to sit with regret whenever you get 60, 70 years old and like, dang, or you telling your kids or your grandkids or your nieces, nephews, dang, I wish I would have went and did that. Go do it. It doesn't matter what someone has to say about you. Go do it. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I- I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, this is probably the final podcast that's going to drop before my birthday this Friday. I'll be 40 years old. And uh, I'm not going to be 60 telling my grandkids I should have because I did. Uh, even if it ended all right here today, it was a hell of a run. I met some great people. I saw places I never thought I'd see. I worked with people I thought I'd never get to work with. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, man, uh, that's what, I, uh, that's what this show's all about. Uh, the positive, positive side of wrestling, people living their dreams, doing good, being surrounded by good folks. I think we're both in pretty damn good shape. I'll make you a deal. Let's hook up a year from today. I'm sure we'll talk before then. Let's hook up a year from today and see where each other's at. Is that a deal? Let's do it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. To the listeners, you know how we do. Treat each other with kindness and respect. You heard the man. You heard me. Go out there and live your dreams. Go check out PWL. If you ain't Uh, that neck of the woods, come on down to RSW and watch some. Just if you're in... Korea, go watch some independent Korean wrestling. I don't give a shit. Just go support indie wrestling, please. Absolutely. Support indie wrestling. Do it. 
That's where yep. the real shit is, believe me. Yep. And I'll ask you to stay on the line with me, my man, Russell Roney. You were subscribers, listeners. You don't know how much I appreciate you. We're on a hell of a ride. Hang in there because we're going to do something crazy for my birthday. I promise you that. We're going to get weird. I love y'all. Be good. It's been a pleasure, James Frost. Looking forward to seeing you back. We're out of here for now.